Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Money Monster is a shallow, unexciting thriller that stars two Academy Award winning actors, George Clooney and Julia Roberts, and is directed by a third, Jodie Foster. So with that much talent in the room, how did this thing go so wrong? Missing every opportunity to kick the story into high gear and generate actual drama through its characters' actions, this limp, heavy-handed, plodding exercise never really matures into the dramatic, moving, timely, and tense drama about global corruption at the expense of the little guy that it so very badly wants to be. That's it for the capsule review. Now let's get in depth. Coming as it does on the heels of films like The Big Short and Wolf of Wall Street, which told true stories of financial malfeasance with uniquely dark comic voices, Money Monster's story is much more of a posturing morality play than an indictment of the American financial system. Its greatest asset actually becomes its greatest flaw. It's fictional. The writers made it all up meaning they could come up with whatever oversimplified scenario they wanted without having to explain the complex machinations of the financial system, something those earlier films handled with such surprising clarity. But here, the scenario is oversimplified to the point where it's dumbed down. A financial crime has occurred here that is so lame, so blunt, so clearly corrupt, the movie feels manipulative as a result. Look, writers often get to stack the deck in their favor, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But here it's like they stuffed that deck to comically overwhelming proportions. I mean, if you sat down at a poker table with six players and you saw every single player get dealt an ace face up, you'd call BS and you'd walk away from the table, right? Well, after a while, Money Monster feels kind of like that. Here's the story. Money Monster is the name of a fictional financial business TV show run by a buffoonish blowhard played by George Clooney. Julia Roberts is his longtime, long-suffering producer who is leaving him soon for a job at another network. Well, you know, it was either that or she had two days left to retirement, huh? Anyway, one of Clooney's long-standing buy recommendations, a shady investment company called Ibis, has a massive loss, $800 million in a single day, and a disgruntled investor played in one mode, shouty and sweaty, by Jack O'Connell, walks into his studio during a broadcast and takes the entire staff hostage on live TV. He wants answers, darn it, as to why the company tanked, and he's not leaving until he gets them. Of course, the investment company claims it was all just a computer glitch, but there may indeed be some skullduggery afoot, and soon Clooney goes from victim to ally, and with Roberts working hard behind the scenes, attempts to get answers to what went wrong. The main problem with Money Monster is despite its clear ambitions, it doesn't have a whole lot of depth. The characters are just paper thin, and they don't feel real. Not George Clooney's character, not Julia Roberts, not O'Connell, not the villainous CEO of Ibis, nor the corporate whistleblower inside Ibis, nor the police trying to negotiate from outside. Nobody is fleshed out in the script. Therefore, the job of making these characters relatable and rootable falls to the talented cast, who do the best they can. I mean, for example, you don't root for Clooney's character because you understand him. You root for him because you like George Clooney. Throughout the film, we're slowly asked to start rooting for O'Connell's character, not because he's shown us something relatable within himself. He's a mindless mook who is simultaneously dumb enough to invest his life savings into one stock, but smart enough to build a bomb and infiltrate and secure a television studio. But we're asked repeatedly to root for him and feel for him simply because George Clooney does, and we like George Clooney. And because the characters don't feel real, their actions don't ring true either. Characters change their minds or make key decisions because the story needs them to, not because you can see them right before your eyes, learning and growing. Meanwhile, the plot just zips straight ahead towards its inevitable conclusion without even stopping to let the story and the characters breathe. And not only is that conclusion predictable, it's earned really, really cheaply because the characters don't ring true, their actions and occupations don't really feel real either. 
The list of coincidences, logical leaps, and contrivances quickly pushes the plot from unlikely to manipulative to, ah, come on! I don't believe that the writers who, again, really, really want to make their movies stand for something, understand how the world of finance works, or journalism for that matter, or computers, or hostage negotiations, or police procedure, or television production, or hackers, oh, or math. If a real company in the real world lost $800 million overnight and then simply gave the explanation of, ah, it was just a computer glitch, whoops, sorry, bye, you mean to tell me that nobody in the media would investigate what went wrong? And then along comes a group of distracted employees of a news magazine show performing some of the quickest, most fortuitous, and most thorough and productive investigative journalism ever seen, all while being held at gunpoint. Yeah, at some point, credulity is strained to its breaking point, and it doesn't even matter how much you like the two main stars, you'll just be looking at your watch. Oh, and speaking of which, one last example of the ham-fisted nature of this film. It really, really wants to play the victim card, pointing the finger at you, at me, at us, by stating in several different ways that the corporate evils depicted are partly the fault of an apathetic culture. At the end of the film, or even at some points throughout the film, the multitudes who are watching the drama unfold worldwide immediately ignore the severity and make light of the situation. With vines and YouTubes and comedic commentary, shame on you, the movie seems to say, for not taking this thing seriously. By not having your world rocked by events like these. There's a man shown watching the news at the very end, leaning against the pool table, and then after the news anchors sign off, he turns away from the TV, suddenly bored, and goes back to his game of pool, casting off the momentary distraction. Friends, friends, after watching this movie, I know exactly how that guy felt. Empty bag of popcorn for this film that spins its wheels in an unfocused and oversimplified hissy fit, rather than the explosive and tense social commentary that it really wanted to provide. This movie only says things that have been said before, and said much more effectively in movies about real people and events that were actually true. Just like with any other kind of monster, if you find yourself in the vicinity of Money Monster, you'd best be advised to run the other way. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and while you're there, go ahead and click subscribe so you'll never miss one of our reviews. In the meantime, leave your comments below and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. Thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. Now please, everyone, disperse. Run along. Go on. Nothing to see here.